Hello everyone. Today we wanted to talk to you about staking your tomatoes. We get a lot of questions when people ask about growing the tomatoes and what we do, but we don't get a whole lot of people asking about staking them, and staking them is incredibly important, especially in the your late June and into July when you get a lot of weather coming through and late afternoon storms. So today we just wanted to give you a few helpful tips on what we do to stake our tomatoes. Uh, so first, what, what I do is I have this nice piece of heavy duty metal uh, with a, it actually has a blunt end, but it still works really well. And what you want to do, and what is very important first of all, is you identify the tomato you're gonna stake. Here, these are gonna be a black cherry. So you'll see why we're gonna use some heavier stakes in, uh, in getting them into the ground. But you wanna identify first off where the stem is. You never want to stake and drive, drive right into where the where the actual stem is. You don't want to do anything to disturb that root ball. So I always come about five or six inches off, and you kind of see the mound there. You can tell where we had the dirt in when we backfilled it. And, it. and you'll see too, once we get ready to tie it up, how having it that far off really doesn't make a whole lot of difference because it is such a big tomato. But what I always do, once I get it ready, I've got this here, and what's really great, we moved into this house five and a half years ago. This piece here and this big sucker here was all left. So uh, what you'll see is everything that we're using is pretty much uh, second hand that we're repurposing. I always give it a nice couple taps just to get it in place like so. And then because we do so many of them, I always try to watch my labor input, especially when we're dealing with this. So about, for me, three to four taps on it, no more than that per, per tomato. And uh, you'll see why. So once it's here, I just give it two, three, and last one, four big taps. Get it up a little bit. And then you wanna make sure your hole matches what your stake is going to, to go in. So I always give it a few twists and such, and then pull it right out. So what, another really neat thing, where we are, where we live, there is a lot of bamboo that grows around. With the uh, cherry tomatoes, especially the black cherries, we've always known these, these things can grow up to seven feet tall. And given the storms that we'll have, they'll knock them over pretty easily. Not, not off the, the stake itself, but they'll flop over and then you've got to deal with cleaning them up. So, uh, word, word of advice, what we've learned, put the stake in now and give it a nice big tie. It'll help you in the long run. Once you get it in there, you'll get it and just start driving it down until you feel like it doesn't go anymore. Because the deeper it is, the better. And that is that is in there. I usually put a little bit of weight on it. And there we go. So now for tying it, another another thing we've learned, bale twine is, uh, is great. Obviously on your hay and straw, but you can actually buy this at most feed and seed stores as well. I, I, you don't need an entire piece. I always just kind of strip it down. You get about six or six or eight pieces off of one one tie. And then I always make it a little bit longer because you'll need that when you're tying. And then just kind of rip it down the middle like so. And now picking it up, also very important, just don't grab it. You're going to want to try to get as much of it tied in here as possible because when these things start growing, even though they're not a bush tomato, they will bush out as well they'll grow up and out. So the more that you kind of uh, get into your initial tie, the better your life will be in the long run. And here I'm getting most of the, of the leaves in. Sometimes you need to have a buddy with you when you're doing this, especially if they've gotten a little out of hand. And then they, well, we, they, that way they can kind of push everything in. But once you get it tied like so, You'll see how it's all nice, it's up in there. And then you'll want to tie it again up, get the crown part of the of the plant going as well, because you ultimately you're gonna want it to grow up. So once you get that, and I'll come back and, and tie those here in, in a little bit. We just wanted to show you what we do with staking all of our tomatoes. So again, just to recap, you want to get yourself something that'll be good to drive something in. Given that these are a very heavy tomato and very prolific on the vine, you're gonna to wanna to get a really heavy steak, drive that in, and then get that tomato tied up. And remember, just don't ever punch that hole in there 
too close to the where the stems coming out of the dirt so you don't want to go through your root ball where you put the plant in so go about five or six inches away and other than that that's it for staking a tomato